This is the British Library, just up the road from London's King's Cross. I'm Tim Campbell, and I'm here to tell you a couple of things about this amazing place that you might not know. Like, for example, this may look like the ground I'm standing on, but in fact, it's a roof to the deepest basements in London. Let's go and have a look. The collections here are absolutely massive. Over 150 million items at the last count. It's got just about everything ever been published in Britain, and its earliest piece of writing is on these 3,000-year-old oracle bones, with its most up-to-date being today's newspapers. Now that's one serious collection. If you're studying or doing research, then of course you can use your local public or college library. But if you need anything slightly more specialised, then you really should come down to the British Library. We've got some fantastic resources, and just like your own public library, absolutely free. The reading rooms here cover every subject. Music, maps, African Asian collections, even newspapers and comics. The library has a sound archive with just about every recording ever made. And they reckon it would take you 65 years to listen to the whole thing. Lots of people use the British Library. You've got students, actors, writers, even TV presenters. We also have journalists and inventors. The British Library itself has the largest collection of patents, 57 million. Working for Sir Alan Sugar, I've learned the power of up-to-date business information. That's why when I'm working my own personal ventures, I come here to the Business and IP Centre. I use commercial databases here for business planning, overall competitive information and market analysis, and it's all for free. Having access to so much information not only saves me time and money, but it gives me confidence that I have the same data as the big players. The centre also runs a variety of business workshops and events with leading business professionals. I've done a number of one-to-one -one coaching sessions for business people who want to turn their dreams into reality. And if that's you, all you've got to do is get a reader pass. It's easy, just come down to reader registration with two forms of ID. One with your signature and another with your home address. I use my credit card and my bank statement. Once you've got your reader's pass, you can use any of the 11 reading rooms. But remember, the collection here is priceless. You could be looking at the only copy of something left in the whole world. Therefore, readers really need to take extra special care. That means no sweets or drinks in the reading rooms and no coats or bags either. But the library is about more than just reading rooms. It's a stunning place architecturally and a cool environment with cafes where you can network, a Wi-Fi zone and a shop full of gifts and books. And of course, the exhibition galleries where you can see all the great books and manuscripts like the Magna Carta, which was the first attempt to make a king follow a set of rules, right through to handwritten songs by the Beatles. You can even turn the pages of some of their more precious work using modern technology. And it's not just available here. You can get to it from anywhere in the world using the internet. In fact, loads of what the library does is on the web. You can search through the 13 million items on the massive catalogue, use the great resources it has for schools, or buy research articles through it. You can even use it to research your own family history. But if you don't have access to the web at home, then your local public library does. And while you're down there, you can even borrow books from the British Library. Right now, the library is digitising over 25 million pages of books. Soon they'll be available online and free for all. Now that's what I call open access. <laughs>